Well, Mo, how are things at the minute? Um, okay. I, I, I would probably stress okay. I mean, it's it's never great when you're putting so much into football and so much into the game, so much positive to to be on the end of defeats. Um, sometimes I quiz, how is this possible? I think to myself, how is this possible? And so there's a bit of that in me, there's a bit of disappointment, a bit of disbelief actually, considering what you're putting into the football match, how much control we have, how much quality we're showing, to not get, to be honest, not get what we deserve to be honest. So yeah, a bit frustrating from that point of view, but the, the, the mood in the camp's surprisingly really upbeat. I think the players see what we're doing is, is, is proper, is correct. It's all individual, I see it so, we're catering to the individual, um, which I think the players enjoy. And yeah, it's, there's, there's a good feeling in the building. Um, and you know, the way we look at it, it's, it's in our own hands. Was there any anger after full time on Tuesday night, or always oh, disappointment, the right word for it? Um, disbelief. That's what it was. It was disbelief. I mean, <laughs> you look at the, the chances created. I mean, not just half chances, proper chances. I mean, you're talking double figures. So it's, yeah, like, like I said, I would have to stress that word disbelief again. Um, and it's about tweaking what we're doing. Um, I think we need to be a bit more pragmatic in both boxes. Um, I think we need a bit, bit more ruthless. Um, but again, when it's in the box, it's instinct. All the other stuff, middle, you know, build-up phase, middle of the pitch control, uh, final third entries are all controllable. And then it's just instinct in both boxes. And I think we have been <coughs> a bit unfortunate um, in both boxes. That's how I would say unfortunate. I suppose one way of looking at it is that results are the most important thing at the minute, mm. um, and that is what it—that is the state of play, isn't it? In mm. terms of trying to get into the playoffs, you know, how desperate are you, Ian, the players, for that result, no matter how it comes? Well, the result is a byproduct of how the games went. So, when you look at it, if we can can what we did against Eastleigh and what we did against Torquay, we win more football matches than we lose, hundred percent. So for me, it's about controlling that part. The results will come. They will come because the process needs to be right. So if we make more box entries than our opponent, we've got a better chance of scoring goals. But at the minute, it just seems to be like, what will go wrong is going wrong. It's, it's like, it's odd. It's really odd. But what we're seeing is we are get most possession, most chances, most box entries, and a team goes up the park and scores a free goal. So there's a bit of that that, that we, we are now going to change our focus on to Saturday to defending our box, first phase and second phase of it. And because that's that's the most important, most most goals you'll get for the for crosses will be second phase. So we'll, we'll change the focus um, because I think the players understand the patterns of play that we're looking for. You, you see them, we're creating chances because of it. Um, but obviously we don't have much training time as such with, with games in so close proximity. And I think you will see a difference on Saturday. What can we do at the other end, Mo? I mean, we, we seem to be really struggling either via luck or via you know, poor execution to be putting the ball in the net as often as we perhaps should be. Mm. You know, what can be done about that? Anything? As a, as a, so if you think about it, strikers. Strikers have been hitting the net since they've been seven-year-old, right? So it's in their muscle memory. What we can throw as coaches is recognising where in the pitch the balls are coming from. Can you adapt to your opponent? So if I'm playing against a centre-back and the ball goes wide and that centre-half drops, I don't need to run to front post because he's creating the space for me. So that's me coaching them as an individual. That's what we control as coaches. But it's ultimately in the player's execution. So my job as a coach is to put Woods into areas that heightens the chances of him scoring. Now, Woods has been getting better and better. If you notice of late, he's not wrestling as much with striker, uh, with centre backs because his movement's been better. He's got proactive thoughts, so he's coming to chances all the time. Now the goalkeeper makes a wonder save, 
a wonder save on uh, Tuesday. So it's it's. I always think with strikers is focus on the movements, don't focus on the finishing, because they've done it since the kids. Kids, it's like riding a bike. So if you overemphasise that, it becomes an issue for them. Just control what's controllable. How's your movement? How are you arriving in the box? Are you at full speed? Are you too fast? Are you... All these wee things that we are trying to t tweak. I use the word tweak because it's no overhaul. Now, again, if you're creating 10, 12 chances in a match, that's all you can ask. You ask any striker, Ian Rush, Al Shearer. If they're not coming to chances, then they get worried. But when they're coming to chances, they're relaxed about it. Let's go. Because it's in the muscle memory. Finishing. So it's your job as coaches and players to provide these front players with chances. We all obviously know a lot about Kyle Wooten. Um, mm. Lewis Knight's been getting a few more minutes in the tank recently. Mm. What have you What have you made of him since since you've come in and, and you know since he's shown glimpses of what he can do in the first team? I think he's done well. Um, you know, he, he's it's a lot of burden to put on a, a young guy's shoulders. You know, same with Jimmy Knowles. You know, ideally these boys should be subs. They're good enough to start, but in in, in terms of the, their age and the maturity and, and their size. Um, you know, I still think these boys have got another eighteen month of development before they're actually fully baked. Um, but I think the two of them have done well. Um, whether the manager shakes it up the weekend or not, will, will remain to be seen. Um, but no, Lewis has done well. Um, and for somebody that's known as a speed merchant, um, I think his his general play has been quite good. Um, so yeah, no, he's done fine. One of the mainstays of the team recently, particularly as Jim and, and Doyler have had a bit of time mm. out with injuries, been mm -hmm. Jake Reeves, who's been the driving force mm. really you know, through the way that you and you and Ian want to play. What mm -hmm. have you made of his performances recently? I think he's been great. I think he's been, uh, you know, you, you get leaders who rant and rave, um, and you've got leaders who just go about and do do their jobs. They're loyal to the system. They are good teammates. Reeves is right up there with that. He's he's been very good. You now we asked him to play as a six. Like a double pivot, um, and we've asked him to play as an eight. Um, I think his natural game is an eight, because I think there's he, he's got good energy. He understands when to detach and go and run forward, um, as does Jim. Doyle is more of your kind of classic six, and a massively popular figure among the fans is Dion Kelly Evans. Mm. Has he surprised you in terms of his physical attributes, in terms of the way he crunches into tackles and he gets up for headers and stuff, despite you know his size? Um, no, because I expect footballers to be tenacious. I expect them to wire into tackles. You know, there's no enough of that. I, I like horrible individuals. You know, for ninety minutes, horrible. Yeah, come off the pitch and be nice and help when all women wear mess their shopping bag. Great, but we need a bit of nastiness. And Dion is, he's just a com great competitor. Um, but in terms of his 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 aerial ability, that was a surprise for me. Um, he certainly got. A great, um, great leap. His timing's very good, and he's not scared. Um, now he, he's he's a great boy, great individual. We talk about it all the time. We want good employees, good employees, and he's the epitome of this football club. If you ask me, guys like him, rested, no complaints, trains well, eats well, good in the group, positive. This is the boys that we want. Um, energy giver. This is, you can't have enough energy givers in your football team. You can have animals, but they're still energy givers. I like that. On the other side of defence, and it's interesting what you were just saying there about attitude and application and willingness to spend some time out of the team and come back all guns blazing. You've got Adam Chickson, who mm. for a long period this season wasn't wasn't near the first team squad mm. and he's been a mainstay under you and Ian. What have mm. you made of his performances? Great. Great. He is... Yeah, he's a boy that you put your... You can hang your hat on. Um, he's, he's mobile. Good left foot, keeps the ball, loyal to the system. Sometimes we play him at wing back, sometimes we play him at left of a three. I think naturally, I think his, his, his best position is that left of a three, a wee bit deeper. So he's coming on to the game more often. Um, but again, another boy, great attitude, energy giver. And, you know, we, we kind of have enough of these people uh, in Norris County. You spoke uh, when you were interviewed by BBC recently. You mm. spoke about how impressed you'd been with the club in terms mm. of the infrastructure, the facilities, and things like that. Yeah. Well, we all know, obviously, results haven't been good enough over the last month or so, even though performances have been, you know, enjoyable often. 
what have you made of the attitude of the players that you've inherited? We, you know, because obviously when you come into a new club, you, I guess, you're kind of wondering what mentality you're going to be dealing with. I think they've been exemplary. I really do. I think the first week, like anything, a new ma- management team comes in, everybody's looking over their shoulder, oh, they're a wee bit unsure. So after the first week, ten days maybe, I could see the change. That yeah, okay, they, they bought into what we're doing quite quickly. Um, it's a humble squad, maybe too humble. I think that might need to be remedied in the summer. And what do you mean by that? Like I said, I want animals. Animals. You need a balance, though, don't you? You need a balance. Listen, you can't have 22 maniacs running around, but I like a wee bit of that. Somebody that's no going to accept just whatever. You know, three or four of them, animals, that are going to go and take a hit, that are going to be the one that smashes into somebody to get that car to say, you're here at Meadow End, you're not coming in 10 points. That, I think we need a bit more of that. That and a coachability, that's is the kind of model. We're looking for extremes come the summer. Extremes. Now, it's not extremes where it's somebody that's seven foot, but we're looking at extreme attributes. We need one extreme attribute in every single sign that we play. Every sign. So that's written up on the coach's board. So any meeting we're in with the recruitment, extremes. No six out of tens. Extremes. And that's what we'll be looking for. What's your view on the playoff picture at the minute? I'm not worried about it. In what sense? It's in our hands. We win our match as we go. Oh, well, you've got a chance of being in the playoffs. So we are focused on what we can control. I know it's similar to the interview I did the last time. What can we control? Can you understand the, the urgency that comes from supporters at this stage of the season where despite how we've played and how we've performed mm. you know, another game's gone by and it's not been the three points that we need can you understand mm. that feeling? Of course and we feel it as well so it's, it's it's about again look at the indicators are we in control of matches? Yes are we making more chances? Yes focus on tweaking that wee last part I think we'll be fine 